Okay, so here we go with some acid base pH kind of information going on here. Just a real basic introduction to what pH means and all the calculations that are associated with pH. So before we can have any discussion about pH, we have to talk about the self-ionization of water. And basically all that is, is water reacting. I mean, it's not truly reaction, but it's kind of, they're reacting and acting as, you know, like this water is acting as a base or acid, this water is acting as a base. And then this guy is acting as the conjugate acid and this guy is acting as the conjugate base. Just kind of playing off of the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases here. And so water can do this to itself. It doesn't do this a lot. If it did, we'd all be in big fat trouble because these ions tend to wreak havoc inside of our systems. Uh, really, uh, only one out of every... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One out of every this many water molecules will actually be able to do this. And so it does not happen very much, but it does happen enough that we can use it as a basis of comparison between related acids and bases, which you'll learn about in future chemistry classes. This is just a very, very simplistic introduction. So two water molecules basically produce a hydronium ion, that's this H3O plus guy, and a hydroxide ion, which you guys should know from memorizing your polyatomic ions that you were supposed to do months and months ago. So what does it take to be classified as neutral, acidic, or basic? We've already worked out what the properties of these kind of solutions are. You know, acids taste sour and bases taste really, really grody, nasty bitterness. And, you know, acids are sticky and bases are slippery. And all those basic properties that you guys learned about. I have to be really careful about using the word basic, huh? All those simple properties you guys learned about a long, long time ago. But it's actually the balance of hydronium and hydroxide ions that causes something to be considered acidic or basic. And so a neutral solution has an equal balance of these two ions. Whereas an acidic solution, you end up with more hydronium ions than hydroxide. And if you don't feel like writing a hydronium ion, a hydronium ion is pretty much the same thing as just writing a hydrogen ion or calling it a proton. And then a basic solution, you tend to have more hydroxides than hydroniums. And that's really all it takes. And what pH is, is a numerical measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration. And so this is just a very simplistic pH scale listing some common um, substances that you would, you would encounter in your, maybe not quite your everyday life, I don't know. I hope not everybody has to do milk and magnesia every day or liquid drain cleaner. But some of these things you do come into contact with every single day. So this is just a realistic pH list. And so to calculate pH, all that you have to do is take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. Or if you wanted to write the negative log, oops, sorry, I got stuck, of the hot hydrogen ion concentration. These two are different ways of writing the exact same thing. And so a strong acid is down here towards the bottom. It's not exactly a hard and fast rule of 3.9. Some people say that, you know, two and below is your strong acid, but you know, it's just down here towards the bottom of the pH. That's where your strong acids live. And then your weak acids live from neutral down to about a pH of three, four-ish, somewhere in there. And then of course neutral is a pH of seven. A weak base is gonna be up above seven, all the way up to 10-ish, 11-ish, somewhere in there. And then a strong base is gonna be up here at the very, very top. Think of it like a tug of war. If you were to place your people on a tug of war, you want your most powerful pullers on the ends and you want your weakest guys right here in the middle. So you can think of it like that if you are so inclined. Now this is probably the absolute best 
thing that I have ever seen when it comes to making calculations and converting between pH and hydro, uh, hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium ion concentration. But this also adds in, sometimes you want to know the hydroxide ion concentration. Or sometimes you want to know this other thing called pOH. And so I like to think of this like a little baseball diamond. You can't go directly from pH to hydroxide ion concentration. You have to go around the bases. And so what's listed out around the arrows is the mathematical functions you have to do to get from one base to the next. And in this baseball game, you can run backwards. Um, so like, let's say you wanted to get from pH and you wanted to find out the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, you just take 10 raised to the negative, that's really hard to see there, negative pH. If you wanted to get from hydrogen ion concentration to pH, we take the negative log of that hydrogen ion concentration. This number right here, it's a very special number um, that is the ionization constant of water. It's a very, very small number. And if you want to convert between hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration, you take this 1 times 10 to the negative 14 and divide it by the concentration that you know. And then to get between these two guys, it looks very similar to these, except instead of using hydrogen ion concentration, you're using hydroxide. And then the relationship between pH and pOH, the magic number is 14. The pH plus the pOH of some substance is going to add up to equal 14. You notice this number keeps popping up. And earlier when I said, one out of every this many water molecules will naturally ionize. It was one with 14 zeros. 14 is a very important number whenever it comes to acids and bases. And that's what that, that 1 times 10 to the negative 14 or 1 times 10 to the 14, 1 out of every, you know, 1 water. It's getting stuck. It's getting my nerves. 1 water out of every 1. Here, I'll just put times 10 the 14th water molecules will ionize. Well, this 14 is what the pH scale is actually based on. Can you have pHs, pOHs outside of the 0 to 14 range? Technically, yes. But once you get outside of a range, once you get below a pH of about 1 or above a pH of about 13, the pH scale isn't really reliable anymore. But don't worry about it. You don't have to know that at this level. Okay, we're just going to have to skip forward because I keep pushing buttons and nothing's happening. So what? Well, pH is used to measure how acidic something is. But the ironic thing is, is that a low pH equals acidic. Whereas pOH measures basicity. And again, a low pOH means that you're dealing with a base. But pH is used most often. It's the one that we will use almost entirely exclusively in this class. It's the one that I will reference the most. It's the one that you'll see the most out in the real world. Yada yada. So let's practice a little bit. What if we have a pH of a solution is, uh, the pH of a solution is 6.3. What is its hydrogen ion concentration? Well, to get from pH to hydrogen ion concentration, you take 10 raised to the negative pH. So all we have to do is say 10 raised to the negative 6.3 and plug that in your calculator and you get 5.0 times 10 to the negative 7. And this is a hydrogen ion concentration. So concentration is measured in units of molarity, moles per liter. Well, what if the pOH of a solution is 12.1? What is the hydroxide ion concentration? Again, to get from pOH to hydroxide ion concentration, you take 10 raised to the negative pOH. So 10 raised to the negative 12.1. This is a very high pOH, which means we're actually dealing with an acid. And so the hydroxide ion concentration, plug this in, is going to be equal to 7 0.94 times 10 to the negative 12.1. 
times 10 to the negative 13. So this is a very low concentration of hydroxide, which is what we would expect to find in an acid. So now if the hydrogen ion concentration is 7.5 times 10 to the negative 8, what's the pOH? So to get from hydrogen ion to pOH, you notice we kind of have to round the bases a little bit. And first I'm going to go from hydrogen ion concentration to pH, and then from pH I'll go to pOH. And you could go the other direction and go from hydrogen ion concentration to hydroxide ion concentration to pOH. But to me the math along this path seems a little bit easier. So to get from hydrogen ion concentration to pH, you take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, so 7.5 times 10 to the negative 8. And that is going to be equal to 7.1. And then to go from pH to pOH, you take 14 minus the 7.1, and so the pOH is going to be 6.9. Now, if the hydroxide ion concentration is this, what's the pH of the solution? Again, to get from hydroxide ion concentration to pH, you got around a couple of bases. You, got, you can't do this in one step. So we do pretty much the same thing. We go from hydroxide ion concentration. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to pOH, and then go from pOH to pH. In all honesty, if I can avoid using that 1 times 10 to the negative 14 in any of my calculations, I'm going to. Not necessarily because it's hard, but just because it requires me to punch more buttons into my calculator. And I would rather do simple math that I can do in my head without having to punch buttons in the calculator than have to push buttons on the calculator. So that's the only reason that I'm skipping that whole 1 times 10 to the negative 14 thing. So to get from hydroxide ion concentration to pOH, I'm going to take the negative log of 2.4 times 10 to the negative 2, and that's going to give me a pOH of 1.6. And then to get from pOH to pH, I just take 14 minus this, and I end up with a pH of 12.4. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and break these notes up, and part two is coming soon.